everyone, welcome to my show. This is Nina MD, Beverly Hills, Fusion of Science and Beauty. And today's show is again about anti-aging and regenerative medicine, bringing credibility into it. I've got an amazing guest. She is phenomenal. And so much of anti-aging, I believe, is from the inside out. As an Ole ambassador, that's what Procter & Gamble did. We created a whole campaign about how beauty comes from within. And no other person can really uh, substantiate then Dr. Stella Stella Schneider. Correct. Welcome Thank to you. my show. Thank you I'm so, so much. honored to have you. Oh Thanks my. again, darling. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And um, you know, you are been a psychologist, and I know I won't mention the names. I don't know to how many celebs and the who's who of um, in Beverly Hills and elsewhere. People flying to see you. I I know your reputation. Um, it's you. impeccable. Uh, but I think it's so important today to educate the audience on just that when we talk about anti-aging and as I as a doctor, I balance the hormones, I balance the nutritional deficiencies, I look for imbalances and I balance all of those things. Right. But there's something also very important that is a mindset. Absolutely. And that is the mind. And how is what we speak beauty and, and how we feel and how we look correlated with what's happening on the inside. Can you please explain that? Well, absolutely. You know, beauty, you know, really comes from within. You know, yes. we can fix ourselves and look beautiful according to others, yeah. but it won't last unless we really feel the beauty from within. But also, beauty is really on the eye of the beholder. And, you know, yeah. this quote became famous since, you know, a writer that yeah. escaped Ever since my I can name remember. Yeah, since yeah. the 1800s yes. that it was written on a book. Yes. And it, it is important because it is really in the eye of the beholder and different cultures also look at beauty in a different way. Yes, yes. You know, and so we often wonder, I mean, I'm being honest, I have friends that will yeah. say, what is, what is up with her? She, how can she... She's like seems so lucky and she's not, you know, she's so, something is so amazing about her and yet you can't quite understand what it is, you know? Absolutely, you know, because, you know, a lot of things come from the charisma that one projects and if one has like a self-concept, self-esteem and feels beautiful inside that goes beyond skin level, I don't want to diminish, you know, no. our outside, you absolutely. know, because it's very, I mean, it's very yeah. important and it's important to all of us. Especially uh, in this town. I mean, we do it all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, in order for it to last, yeah. it has to come from within. That self-esteem, that sense of character, morals, charisma. Do you, you know, feel that? Aura. Do you feel, is it, as a psychologist, what is the term? Is it an aura people give? Is it a energy, what is it that people give or how do you recognize when a, when a client comes to you and you immediately know whether they're extruding that or, or they're not? Well, you know, then we would be talking about charisma, you know, and body okay, language, okay. right? You know, people who have like great sense of self-esteem and they believe in themselves, they are connected to others. They make others feel that they are the most important person and they're in the moment you know, they have a sense of power, they have a sense of feeling, they have all of the resources and their warmth, their kind, and they really listen to the other person, they maintain eye contact, and they project that into the world. So that's why when you see people walking into a room, you know, you say like, oh my gosh, you know, look at that person, she looks so beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, it, it may not be beautiful, depending on the terms, right, right, yeah. you know, to all but, the people in the room, right, but right. it's the aura that we represent. So it is a, it's an aura that we, is, that we give off, so to speak, when, okay. the, when, when we... Do you think, as a psychologist and, and the work that you do, is there also what, in order to achieve that, yes. what are the ingredients? Well, you know, the ingredients, you know, are really for the person you know, to know themselves. How do they define beauty? Do they define beauty by the external world and the definitions that others give them? Or they define beauty internally? You know, so in it comes words, from within feel, out. So in other words, it's how they comfortable they feel? 
about what themselves? In today's world with so many social media and yeah. everybody and Photoshop and everybody yes. wants to look like, you know, perfect, you know, picture perfect, basically. Yes. You know, a lot of people have the tendency to define beauty according to what others portray. So that's like kind of like what we call external locus of control right. rather than internal locus of control. What is it that I am? What do I feel good about? What is my culture? What is my background? Because I have to tell you, you know, that different cultures define beauty differently. Right. Actually, you You're know, there was right. an experiment that they did in which they sent a picture of the same person and they asked different people in tw in 10 countries you know to so different countries yeah. different countries to photoshop that picture and it's so interesting how every person in the different country they photoshop this raw image the same person completely different wow uh, wow so the, yeah, that so tells us you know yes. about that so going back to the ingredients i think that the person has to know themselves what is it that they want how do they want to look like how important is that to them not to get lost in only the outside and to also nourish you know that internal self yeah. that internal sense of well-being that here i am i know what i'm doing and this is what i'm going to project I'm not putting my emphasis on the judgment of others. Yeah. I'm putting my emphasis into what is it that I want to tell the world. Yeah, yeah. What, what do when people come to you, um, and, and you know, so much of my um, treating the hormonal deficiencies, all of these things, is really tied into also I need to have someone help them um, how to, like you said, how to reach something to the root cause. Because if that doesn't heal, then they're manifesting as ailments, right? As symptoms. Yes. Well, one of, one of the problems that happens when you have somebody in the therapy room, you know, and they want to look beautiful, but they don't feel beautiful. You know, you're going to have the tendency, and I'm sure you will see yeah, this yes. over and over again, to see people who have this morphic disorder. Yes. That it doesn't matter oh. what you do to them. They They'll look, find another little line, yeah, another little something. They look at yes. the mirror and they are not happy. And they end up destroying themselves because they have surgery after surgery and they keep doing like, you know, all kinds of procedures yes. because it doesn't matter how, what is it that you're going to do. They're not going to be happy with themselves. So in those cases, you really need to look into the trauma. You need to look inside the person and the history. What is it that happened during is there their any, development? In that, in that particular instance, is there any one common theme or is it every case so bit different? Well, a lot of people are born with perfectionistic parents, like either a mother or a father that, you know, competed with them and or were critical or, uh, you know, people in the school, you know, that they bullied yeah. them yeah. Uh, yeah. and they had like certain definition of beauty yeah. and they were always making fun of themselves. And actually, you know, one interesting thing that is happening you, uh, in England, there is a lady that is doing, it's called Models of Diversity. And she's doing, trans, what she's doing is that she's transforming the world the wrong way. You know, she's including, you know, this, she's including disabled people, kind of making, wow. taking the disability and turning it into able. And she's having older people, you know, Amazing. obese people, people with disabilities. It, it doesn't matter what it is because all of these people, all, you know, they have beauty. And they, everybody has a right to want to know how they want to dress. Yes. You know, fashion yes. is important to everyone. Yes. Yeah. So... Um, I'm for a surgery, actually. You know, I yeah. had my, my surgery during the Real yes. Housewives of Beverly Hills yes, yes, episode, yes. Two, yes. episode 2. Okay. And it basically, it was the first time ever in my life, you know, that I did yeah. a facelift. And I did it at a time in which I really didn't need it yet. But it was important to me because I'm very young at heart. Yes. And that's another yes. thing, you know, if you don't have that feeling of being young at heart, it doesn't matter if you look like a teenager or 30 years younger, you have you're to feel, still going you to behave feel, old. Yeah, it's, you have to feel that. You have to almost like feel like, you know what, the year is like, I'm, I'm, my mindset is like when I was in my 20s, like where I have to go, yeah. still dreaming, still having plans. But with the wisdom, goals. right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. So, what do you do? What do you do in a day to take care of yourself? During the day? Yeah. Uh, well, Just like, what do you eat generally? What, what, are, what are some tips? Well, I pamper myself. 
you know, I always yeah. try to take good care of myself. You know, I should walk more, but I only walk when I walk my doggies. Yes, yes. You know, actually, I don't know so if I walk my doggies or my doggies walk me. <laughs> so you walk, so you do you know, some sort so, of exercise, yes. yeah? I try to eat um, small portions at least every two or three hours. You I know, see. because when you have your metabolism working, you know, the, yeah. it, the body doesn't feel that you're starving it. Yeah, and actually, yeah. it works faster. Right. And it slowly, yeah. you know, because the stomach takes, the brain actually takes 20 minutes in order to get the signal, I'm full. So one yeah. mistake that a lot of people do, especially in today's day, you know, that everybody's rushing from one place to the other one, is that they eat too fast. So they tend to overeat because the signal arrives later and then they feel stuffed. Yeah. You know, so walking, sleeping, you know, whether you sleep, it's better to sleep eight hours a day, right? Yeah. But if you sleep five or six hours and that's what you're used to and you maintain, you know, that over time, then it's okay. Pamper yourself, you know, yeah. do the things you enjoy, whether it's riding, dancing. Once a week we I go, go dancing, dancing, you know, yeah. for example. Yeah. And always remember that there's time for leisure, not all, all is work, work, work. Yeah. You know, work needs to be the passion of somebody else. What do you see as the number one blockage to in your clients that keeps them from, uh, I would say, from, a, that, that would accelerate their aging. You know, it keeps them from maintaining your youth, so to speak. What is the number one, if you, if you could just generalize, what would be the number one thing? Lack of self-esteem and sometimes jealous husbands that they don't allow them, especially in women, because yeah. they're so jealous that they rather their wives you know, don't look beautiful ah. because they're possessive and they don't want them ah. to... Yeah. Uh, to exert, the, yeah. yeah. Exactly, to exert any attention I from see. others. I see. That's very interesting. Yes, yeah. that's, so that's that a means, totally that's different a, that, topic. That, yeah, that's a totally different topic for another day, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and what have you seen in terms of, I mean, how do people, like, what do you, like, I know you've written a book, I know you've done um, so many, you've treated so many celebrities and, and you, you travel, you do so much. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get, uh, like, you know, how did, you, how did your career uh, change for you into just realizing that I need to be here and helping people, you know, um, here, uh, in, you know, right here in Beverly Hills? Yeah. Well, it was very interesting because when I first started my career, you know, I, I was born in Mexico City. Yes. And yes, I came here as an adult with my two children, you know, yes. who were still young four and a half and six years old. Yes. Uh, so I went back to the university when my children were young. Amazing. Right? You know, so um, I went to USC, you yes. know, fabulous, you yes. know, the yeah. Trojans. My son was there, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, basically when I went into my master's, you know, for psychology, um, and I started my internship yeah. at my master's level, yeah. you know, people started calling me from radio stations, and, uh, you know, because they wanted, because I'm bilingual, biculturally, yeah. you know, so they wanted my opinion, my expert opinion. And here I was only being an intern. So yeah, my amazing. career in the entertainment industry, if you will, yeah. started very early in my career. Yeah. And because of it, kind of in a way, it started guiding my career in terms of the problems that people would present to me. Yeah. And that's why I end up being a licensed psychologist, licensed marriage and family therapist, and a certified sex therapist. Yeah. Because these are the three things that are, right, that are issues right here in Beverly Hills and yeah, exactly. in many other places. Right? And, you know, yeah. basically you mentioned, you know, my book. My book is not out yet. It has been written. It's being yeah. rewritten. It's going yes. through the yeah. ed edited yes. process, yeah. you know, and it's about sexology. It's about GPS to ecstasy, basically, you know, yeah. about how to develop that ecstasy and intimacy not only in the act of sex per se but in the whole being of interacting with each other yeah. and uh, you know it's I'm, I'm very thrilled you know that uh, which is it, what I'm going to talk to you about on what, the next show that you promised to come back on <laughs> I will I, yes. okay so we'll, let's so, not talk about this okay. so how, how do people how do people um, find you what is your website uh, my website is very easy, www.drdr, right. yes. not the whole word, right. dr, dr. Estella with an E, 
and double L, E S T E L L A. L -A right, I noticed it was a double L. Snyder, mm -hmm. or Snyder. In Spanish, Snyder, in English, Snyder. S N E I D E R dot com. Yep. That's my website. My Twitter is at DR Estela, uh -huh. the same my Instagram. And my Facebook, my public page is Dr. DR dot Estela Snyder. Got it. Got it. No, I, I've. I, I just want to thank you so much for being on my show. I think the next show that you promised to be on, I really want to get into some of these issues about how do you create intimacy and relationships? How does, how you feel and how, how beautiful, because I think these are things that, as we know, um, uh, when we maintain intimate relationships, yes. when we have a good uh, sexual life, they help our neurotransmitters, they help our hormones, and as an anti-aging specialist, I know that these are very, very important things, and yes. sometimes I can't fix oh, I have just so by much giving to tell with, you about it. Yeah, I can I, I can sometimes just time. fix it, you know, with just like yeah. a hormone or that. Okay, absolutely. So thank you again so much. Um, really, I'm thrilled that you thank were. Thank you uh, so uh, much. Get, I'm thrilled yes. that you were here. This is Nina MD. We're going to be back with my next guest. Um, if you like more information, you can also go to my website www.ninamd.com, and uh, we'll be right back. Nina MD Fusion of Science and Beauty. Mm -hmm.